All right, guys, I've got some mystery meat from uh, Code Red. I got it from Ronin Flicks. Uh, this is a film I've never heard of until I saw it on Ronin, or in, you know, Code Red released it. Uh, it's a film by a director named. This is a fucked up name. I'm gonna I'm gonna say all different versions of this name. Uh, Pupai. Puppy. Poopy Avati. I don't know what, how to pronounce the names. Pupi. P-I. Pupi. Pupi. I don't Fuck, I don't know. Anyways, Pupi Avati uh, is, is a film called Zeter, which I had no idea what that title was supposed to mean until I read the back. And uh, apparently this is the name of a doctor or a scientist. And this film is about a writer... Who gets a type? I use typewriter and, and discovers uh, imprints of the previous owner's uh, writings, and it ends up being a scientist named Zeter, and he's writing all these wacky like theories and stuff, and and apparently this is like like a sci-fi, you know, occult-oriented uh, zombie type of, of movie. It's about you know reanimating the dead, so. Who doesn't love zombies? I had to jump on this. Uh, I think it's a limited with the slip cover, so I definitely had to jump on it just to make sure I got that slip cover. You know how it is. Uh, but other than that, I don't really know much else about this. I can't tell you more, but I can after I watch it. And we're about to open it, and I'm going to pop it in and watch it and let you know. Let's go. All right, so there you are with the cover of Zeter, which is pretty cool. I like the little ghoul in the back. Uh, I'm assuming this is Gabrielle Lavia, the main star. I saw that, actually saw this on YouTube. Like the, somebody put the full movie up on YouTube. It might be taken down now, but if you just want to give it a run with, you know, to see if you like it before you buy it, you might can try there. See if you can find it. I don't think it's on Netflix or anywhere else for that matter. Maybe Amazon Prime has it because they seem to carry a lot of these like Code Red. Uh, movies along with uh, Vinegar Syndrome and Arrow so you might find it on there I haven't looked there yet but you got uh, the transfer with color correction interviews with the director and star English and Italian subs so and reversible artwork so that's cool not a whole lot of stuff going on in here but let's say if the movie's good I'll be happy Get in here. These slip cases make it hard to open. <laughs> Sometimes I don't want to ruin the case. Okay, now we're in. And we got the same cover underneath, same back underneath, and there's your disc. In the back, look, get a better look. Oh, that's cool. Revenge of the Dead. So, if you can't find this movie by looking up Zeter, you might try that title. That seems to happen a lot with like these Code Red releases. Sometimes they'll have like two or three working titles, and you know, whatever they go with might not be what's listed for at IMDb or wherever else. But I'm gonna pop this in. And I hope it's awesome. And I'm going to let you know if it is. So, be right back. That was pretty good. Dig it, dig it, dig it. Uh, like, okay. <laughs> this is nothing like what you're going to get here. This is what you're getting. It's it's not like a blood and gut zombie movie. This is like a mystery thriller. This is like Da Vinci Code sort of like you know where you know you're just hunting and trying to crack this puzzle. He like the, he spends the whole movie just driving and asking questions, <laughs> like just finding one person after another and just trying to get to the bottom of this mystery. He he. Uh, his wife or girlfriend 
whatever she is to him. She, uh, uh, his name is Stefano, by the way, this is our main character. His his girlfriend buys him a uh, typewriter for like an anniversary present. So I guess they are married. Uh, it's an anniversary present because uh, he's a writer, and it's like some fancy new thing. Uh, you know, it looks ancient in in our time, but you know, I guess back then it was like a new thing. Uh, he he you know he stays up late and he's typing on. It, and all of a sudden, like the ribbon pops. And so he like unloads it and is like trying to fix it and he starts, you know, pulling the ribbon out and it's like keeps track of all the, every, every letter that's typed, it keeps a, an imprint on the ribbon. And so he's just like looking through it for whatever reason, I guess he gets curious and, you know, cause this was like a, a used purchase and he finds, uh, this like a, a series of texts about, uh, defeating death and you know stuff like that and uh he, he he like retypes the whole thing he like you know on paper so it's easier to read and he goes to the college and there's like some guy at the college that's like into like ghosts and supernatural stuff i'm not sure why he's at a college uh, but you know he kind of inquires about some of the things in this because he doesn't understand it completely uh but it turns out there's uh, these places, like geographical places, that they call K zones. So that's where all the, like a lot of supernatural things happen. They, they they say it's like a timeless place where it's you know it's unchanged by time. And so Zeter, who, who's uh, they they dig him up at the beginning of the movie. Uh, they find his body in a K zone, and it was his attempt of uh, being reincarnated or, or revived. So he, he pretty much sacrificed himself for this experiment, and you know was a, was buried in that spot. And somehow his typewriter gets to our Stefano here, who you know un, un, uncovers all this. So he's like on a wild goose chase. He finds people he can't trust, of course. You know, just and even the people who can trust you still, they still seem like shady characters. Like you don't really know if you can trust them. I mean, you kind of find out who's good and who's bad by the end of the movie. But yeah, he goes all, he kind of goes all over the place, and and he drags his wife along with him, which is a bad idea. Uh, you know, it's a bad idea for him to keep pursuing this, like. Especially once he finds out it's going to lead down a dangerous path, he just keeps going. I guess he's so like involved that it's like he he just can't stop. Uh, I guess I would compare this to like uh, even uh, the director said it. I, I watched the interview of the director and the special features. It says it's like Pet Cemetery and like a down Dan Brown novel. So you know, like Da Vinci Code meets Pet Pet Cemetery. That, that's exactly what it is. Uh, I like it better than the Da Vinci Code movie. I will think I like it better than Pet Cemetery. I thought this was a pretty good movie. Uh, there's some really creepy, like, atmospheric shots. You know, there's nothing really... There's not, like, a huge body count in this. There's... And, and the people that do get killed usually get killed by humans, not, like, zombies. And the zombies that are in here aren't, like, your typical zombie, you know? Like... Our, our character in the background here reaching through is, is our our friend Zeter, or Zader. They kept pronouncing it Zader in the film. Uh, the director com or interview, the voiceover kept saying Zeder. So I, I, I still don't really know how it's pronounced. But uh, Zader sounds accurate to me. I'm going to go with Zader. Uh... Yeah, this was really cool. It's you know it's kind of it's slower paced. Like if you're looking for a blood and guts zombie film, if you're looking for the alternate cover of this with the guy like coming out of the ground all like gooey and and and, and decayed, uh, it's not gonna find it here. So I would I, I wouldn't even advertise this as a zombie movie. It's not really that kind of movie. It's totally different. But I did like it. I do recommend it. If you're patient, uh, I would also suggest if you do watch this, maybe keep the subtitles on 
because even though they have an English audio track, for some reason, maybe it's just my sound bar, but, <laughs> but uh, it's like when there's dialogue, a lot of times it's really low where you can't really hear it. So if you turn it up to where you can hear it, then all of a sudden the music just boom! And it just like blows you away. It's, it's not a good balance between the music and dialogue all the time. Uh, so, you know, I didn't want to wake the neighbors, so I kind of had it turned down. And, and uh, that kind of ruined it a little bit, so I had to go back. I actually watched this twice, because or once and a half. Because I was like, God damn it, I don't know what the fuck's going on. Because I missed some dialogue, you know. And uh, so I, had to, I wanted to restart. I wanted to make sure I got everything in. Because this is a puzzle. And if you're missing pieces, you're not going to figure it out. So, yeah, I went back and turned the subtitles on. Just so I could hear, you know, the, the parts where they're not talking as loud. Uh, so, I recommend doing that. Or just watching it in the Spanish, or it was Italian... Might have been an Italian track with English subtitles. Might want to do that instead. Uh, but the but the English audio wasn't bad at all. So it wasn't. There's like one scene uh, at a hotel where this lady comes in, and you know, it's the only time you see her in a whole movie. And it was the worst dubbing. <laughs> it was so bad. But other than that, the dubbing was pretty good. So yeah, Zader on Code Red. Or you can get it on, I don't know if you can get it on Code Red Big Cartel, but you can definitely get it on Diabog DVD. You can get it on Running Flix. Uh, so I'll leave a link in the description where you can find this. Uh, if you like this video, hit that like button. And if you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. And uh, stay up to date with everything I'm unboxing and reviewing. Because i got plenty more from Vinegar Syndrome, Arrow, Raro Video, uh, more Code Red, Scorpion releasing all kind of stuff so yeah if you like all that keep tuning in i'll keep uh reviewing so see you guys later